Hello, everybody. I'm Mary Johnson. I come from Elishon, Donegal. And my story is about the lost suitcase at Christmas time. It was the early 70s. And I had planned to come home to Donegal to spend Christmas with my father, who lived on his own. I was a little nervous because I was going to be traveling with my two-year-old daughter for company. I packed two small case suitcases before leaving Manchester. One had a few presents that she could open on Christmas morning. The other had a few clothes for both of us to wear while we were there. Then off we set for Manchester. We settled on the train journey to Haitian, where we were going to catch the ferry to Belfast. In those days, only a few people booked a ferry, a booked a cabin on the ferry, sorry. I wasn't one of those few, so I made a bed for my daughter on a blanket that I brought with me. I snuggled down on the seat beside her, and we slept through most of the five to six hour journey to Belfast. Luckily, I wasn't seasick on this occasion. Arriving in Belfast, my problems began. In those days, normally, people would get off the ferry and grab a taxi to take them to the train station. From there, they would catch the train to their destination. Mine, of course, was Derry. My father would hopefully meet us there. But things didn't work out quite as planned. On getting off the ferry, we queued in the dark, drizzly morning for a taxi, which was meant to take us to the station. We waited for some time, but nothing was happening. Then suddenly I heard a loud bang in the distance, which disturbed me. I picked up my toddler and held her close. Then a man came up to us and announced, there is some trouble and there's going to be no taxis running this morning. You'll have to travel by bus to the train station. Now I had a toddler and two suitcases. I managed to struggle on the bus nervously. I found a seat and settled my, uh, settled my two year old down. I just struggled to put the two cases up on the rack. Then I was relieved to sit down beside her. It was only a short journey to the train station, but I had to unload and reload the cases again before the train took off for Derry. We were very tired and I dozed off on the two hour journey to Derry. Every now and again, her little voice would pipe up, going to see Grandad, going to see Grandad. She never complained. Luckily, she was a sweet, patient little, little child, never complained. Still doesn't. At the waterside station, I took my cases, cases off the rack and hurried out. My father was there with a neighbour who owned a car. He gave us a warm welcome, a hug, and made a fuss of my little girl. My father had a pocket full of sweets for her, as was his custom. They put the cases in the boot of the car and set off for Donegal. We arrived home in Donegal. When we arrived home in Donegal, I put my cases in the bedroom. I opened one and took out a few necessary things, night clothes for both of us and some things to wear the following day. I left the other case unopened. It contained a few Christmas presents for my little girl. I didn't want to open it while she was there. I would open it later when she was asleep. The following day was Christmas Eve. But Catherine was far more interested in following the hens and ducks around and watching my father milk the cows when she was a bit panther. That evening, a few of the neighbours came in to work on us home. They had a few drinks while I got my little one ready for bed. When she was asleep, I decided to open the other suitcase. I was thinking I would wrap the doll and the other few, few little things that I had in the case and put them under the tree that I had decorated earlier. I was getting quite excited. I imagined her opening the presents in the morning. I sat back to take a deep breath after a long, busy day. Finally, I pressed a button on the other case. And the lid sprang up. I stood back in disbelief. This is not my case. It didn't have any of our clothes in it or any of the other presents, little presents. What I saw shocked me. I couldn't believe my eyes. I stood for a few minutes staring at it. I dug about to expose the, expose the contents. 
The first thing I saw was a bottle of whiskey. The second was another bottle of whiskey, then a bottle of brandy and one of gin. I dug a bit deeper to uncover three cartons of player cigarettes and a pair of men's pyjamas. There was nothing else in the case. Whose case was this? It certainly wasn't mine. I wanted to cry. I left the case open and went to the kitchen where my father's friends were having a drink and singing. There's a glen in old Jukonor. There's a cottage in the glen where dwells a fair young maiden who inspired the hearts of men. I was nearly in tears and told them the story of my strange suitcase with so much alcohol. They stopped singing when they saw my face and heard my story. Ach, why don't we open one of them bottles? They looked at the half-empty bottle that they'd been drinking from. Sure, this is nearly empty. No, no, I said, you can't. It belongs to poor, some poor devil who will be looking for his suitcase. He may not have missed it yet. Well, he'll have a long journey up here to Malin. They laughed. I went back to the room, leaving them mourning the passing of poor Noreen Vaughan. I shut the suitcase quickly. Luckily, my father had some presents for my little girl. One was a mouth organ. Another neighbour also bought a present for her. I was very thankful and put them under the tree. Then a very kind neighbour sent up a goose. I should have been grateful, but I had to pluck the damn thing. And that was not how I expected to spend Christmas Eve. In the morning, she walked up very early playing the mouth organ, but she soon got tired of that and woke her poor granddad, who probably had a bit of a hangover, to take her out to see the wee baby car that she'd seen in the bar the previous day. But we did enjoy the Christmas dinner, and I tried to put a brave face on the story of my missing case. The following week, many times I was begged to open one of them damn bottles, but I stuck to my guns and refused to open it. Of course, we didn't have a telephone in those days, and neither did any of the neighbours. So I couldn't inquire as to who the case belonged to. My only option was the local post office, which of course was shut over Christmas. But when it opened, the kind postmistress went all out of her way to trace the, trace the case. I was relieved and st I still don't know how she did it in those days before the internet, etc. It turned out that the owner was a man from Belfast, home for Christmas. Now I imagined this poor man spending Christmas city with a case full of women's clothes and a child's toys instead of his good whiskey and brandy. He probably imagined someone else enjoying it. Arrangements would have to be made to get it back to him. A week later, on our way back to Manchester, due to the quick thinking of this postmistress, I was able to leave the case with the whiskey intact in a pub in Donegal Square. And here I picked up my own suitcase, still intact, in that same pub. In fact, the suitcases were identical. Same colour, same style. Which was probably why the, where the mix-up occurred. Except that mine had no bottles in it. I would like to have met this man and thanked him for keeping my suitcase safe. But as I was rushing to board the ferry, there was no opportunity for that. I expect that he was grateful to me for refusing to open his whiskey. So the story had a ha happy ending. After all, when we got back to Manchester, my little girl was delighted to find the toys that she was meant to have on Christmas morning. But that was the last Christmas I would travel on that long journey with my little child. Many years later, we moved back to Donegal and I'm now able to spend every Christmas with that little girl and her own children. Oh, Mary, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, lovely. Um, I am I'm so filled with admiration for your fortitude to withhold the various pressures on people to crack open one of those bottles of whiskey for themselves. 
They did indeed. I, <laughs> when there was a little party going on around <laughs> this, they yeah. ran out of people. They say, for God's sake, will you open one of them bottles? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 